And I always start with a philosophical statement, as I said, because my approach to astrology is different than most of what you've been exposed to. I do not think the planets are running the world. I think that life is the creative power, that life is continuous, that we've been here before, and we come back to keep on growing, and we come in where we fit, where we match the state of the universe. So the horoscope's like a mirror, a way to see ourselves, what we ourselves have created, and if we want to change ourselves, then it's up to us to do that. And that doesn't mean it's easy, because what we bring back is just habits, and habits are not easy to change, but possible if we really want to. So the horoscope is a picture of our character that we ourselves have developed, and it's up to us what we do with it. It does not show the details of the life. It shows the principles operating in our own nature, basic drives and desires in our own nature. It's an inside job. Nothing out there doing anything to us. But it's, <coughs> it's still quite complicated because it's a picture of life with 12 ways to be in the world, which you're familiar with, with the 12 signs. But they are described in astrology in many ways. The planets say them in their, their way. The signs say them another way. The houses of the chart say them in still another way. The same 12 principles. So we get the same meaning with the planet Mars, the sign Aries, and the first house of the chart. And much of the way astrology is taught is just totally confusing to people because they talk as if these were all completely different. And all you need to learn is 12 basic principles, and then astrology is absolutely logical. But that doesn't mean that it's going to spell out the details of the life because each of the principles can be satisfied. We can try to satisfy that desire in a lot of different details. Like letter one, Mars, Aries, and the first house are just, I want to do what I want to do, and I want to do it right now, and now I've done that. What else can I do? I want to do something different. Now what a person wants to do could be anything in the world. And so trying to say they're going to do this detail or that detail is totally futile. It's just a big guessing game when astrologers try to guess the details. But if you stick to the psychological principles, you're going to be right pretty much of the time, and hopefully it'll be helpful. People can say, okay, this is what I really want. There's a better way to go after it than what I've been doing. And there'll be a range of possible details with each principle, <clears throat> and anything important in the nature is said over and over and over again. It's very repetitive. So hopefully we can use the mirror in the sky to understand ourselves and to make a better life for ourselves. Now, the only ways I know to work out comfortable handling of these 12 sides of life <clears throat> is either through taking turns with them or through a compromise where you have a little bit of several because there are real conflicts between some of them. Some of them are naturally harmonious and they support each other, they complement each other, and some of the desires are naturally in conflict. And so our challenge is to make peace between the conflicts, either take turns with the desires or to find a middle place where we have a little bit of both. If we don't manage one of those two solutions, we have a number of possible dangers. We may repress a part of our nature, bury it in the subconscious, and that's when we get sick. Subconscious runs the body, and if it gets too clogged up with negative emotions, pretty soon it produces body symptoms that are like a message saying, I'm not happy, do something. And if we can uncover whatever it is we buried, deal with it, then that helps the body get well. Another possibility is projection. Now that's when we find someone else who will do part of us for us because we're not comfortable with that side of ourselves. And the more we don't do it, the more they overdo it till it finally gets uncomfortable. Like a seesaw, we keep going down, they keep going up. So that doesn't work very well either. And still another possibility is displacement doing one of the 12 sides of life where it doesn't fit and it doesn't work very well. So those are the kinds of things we can look for as things that we could change if we've been doing that. Now sometimes imbalance is a problem. We may be excessive in some areas and there may be parts of life we've neglected. So we look at that possibility too. But for most people it's the conflicts <laughs> that, that bug them. And uh, yet it's not that impossible to work them out, to have a place in our life for each of these 12 sides of ourselves. 
So they become complementary rather than in conflict. Now, of course, we also want to look at the chart for the talents, the strengths, the assets that are there to be carried further. Hopefully, that's our gift to the world. And also, hopefully, we can enjoy the journey as we go on learning what we came to learn. Anytime we make a part of life into an ideal, it's like an idol and it's, it's expecting more than it can happen with a fragment of life and we're going to be disillusioned and disappointed when it turns out to be human. So looking for an ideal in any fragment of life is risky. Making it so important we can't live without it, heaven on earth and be yeah. perfect with no compromises and no effort not gonna not gonna happen it just doesn't so we need to be realistic saturn is in the fourth house so that's connecting your career with home family the land base of operations and that could simply mean a career that affects the public is doing something for the public. This could again have been a career in real estate or a career in home decoration, interior design, or landscape gardening, or just something you do in your home, your work carried out in your home. It could have been a family business. There's all these many possibilities in terms of details. Well, Saturn goes with our last lecture, last week here. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn in the 10th house of the chart. And uh, Saturn is the great teacher. He is in effect, he rules time, he rules natural law and man's law and karmic law, law on all levels. And he therefore is the one who brings you the consequences of what you have been doing in the past. So wherever Saturn is, you are reaping what you have been sowing uh, since the last time he went around, which is about 28 years. He's the great reaper in a sense and he is not anything to worry about. He doesn't make it any harder on you than you've earned. It's, uh, he's the principle of exact justice, the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It's associated with Hebraic law and Hindu law, both of which are Capricorn religions. And if you're having serious trouble with Saturn, then you better check what you're sowing because you're reaping. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, you know, if you're really being bothered by Saturn, it means you're either trying to get out of something you have earned or to get something you have not earned. It says you needed a career that was independent and intellectually challenging and varied, not under anybody else, if possible. Preference is not to be under anyone. Aquarius will work with people equalitarian, it's an air principle, equal, but it prefers not to be told what to do, to work under anybody else. And the desire for variety is really quite strong. Constant need to have something new and different all the time. It's like, I've done that, what else can I do? I've done that, what else can I do? Strongly emphasizes the need for a field of work that gives you variety, that is not routine or repetitive. But the Taurus principle is the physical pleasure, where the Libra principle is intellectual, mental, more emotional pleasure. But both of them can be artistic. So it's a double focus on artistic talent, a really nice ability for that, which is strengthened by the fact that we do have some activity in the sign of Libra. And we have the Pisces moon, because Pisces is the search for infinite love and beauty, and oneness with the whole, kind of the mystical urge. And so we associate both Venus and, their so and its signs and houses, and Neptune and its sign and house, with that ability to feel, the uh, to be attracted to the aesthetic side of life. Now that still doesn't give us details. 
For one person, this may mean music. For someone else, it's painting. For someone else, it's poetry. For someone else, it's dancing. For someone else, it's gardening or making fancy cakes, interior design, or whatever. There's all kinds of ways to make the world more pleasant, to give pleasure to people. Taurus is our ability to enjoy the physical world. That's number one meaning of Taurus. That can be any number of expressions, depending on the person. We can use it to make money, to spend money, to collect possessions, to indulge the appetites, or to create beauty in any of many ways. So it's very associated with artists. The ability to make life more attractive, more comfortable, more pleasant, S satisfaction, pleasure with the world. And when you put all that huge collection into the seventh house, that's the Libra house, the natural house of Libra, the other Venus sign. So it's a double Venus statement. Sign and house both ruled by Venus. And Venus, again, is our pleasure principle. But the Libra side of Venus is pleasure with other people, for the most part. Sharing life with other people. Partnership. That can include marriage. It can include business partnerships, it can include counseling relationships, and it can include good friends if we see each other regularly, not casual or intermittent, but regular systematic interactions with others as an adult with pure equal relationships. So there's a need for people in the life. Conflict between the Earth Principle, which includes Taurus, which is willing to do repetitive routine things for survival, because Earth is the survival element, to be able to pay the rent, to be able to buy food, to cope with the physical world. And there's a natural conflict between that Earth principle and fire, which wants to keep doing something new and different, as well as Aquarius. They both want to keep moving on. So that's the conflict between stability and security and permanence of the Earth and variety and excitement and drama and creativity and always something new and different. The, the fire in the Aquarius. Now, it's these are inherent in life. So I said my philosophy at the beginning is that all of us have all 12 of these potentials and it's our challenge to figure out some kind of compromise so we don't totally deny a necessary part of life.